Hey, it's your friendly neighborhood immunologist, and today's video is a requested video about autoimmune encephalitis. Autoimmune encephalitis affects 41,000 Americans. It's a neurodegenerative disorder, meaning that the neurons of the brain die over time and are not replaced. This can give people a wide variety of symptoms, anything from headaches to seizures to personality changes, hallucinations, and even coma and death. So it's a very serious disorder. Your immune system has basically made a mistake. Uh, the immune system has recognized parts of your brain cells, neurons, as though they were a pathogen, and they've mounted an immune response to them. So today I'm going to draw for you what is autoimmune encephalitis, what could cause it, and then what is happening to the neurons during autoimmune encephalitis. And then at the end, we'll talk a little bit about potential therapies. So let's get started. So autoimmune encephalitis happens in the brain, and that means I need to give a quick overview of the two different types of neurons we need to talk about. The first one is the presynaptic neuron, and then the second one is the postsynaptic neuron. The presynaptic neuron is the one that sends signals to the postsynaptic neuron. Now these signals can either be excitatory or inhibitory but the sum of this connection is how you move, how you think, how you recall memories. So what happened if all of a sudden antibodies were stuck in between the presynaptic and postsynaptic neuron? That's autoimmune encephalitis. Antibodies are stopping neurons from communicating properly. And then over time, these autoimmune antibodies can start to damage and destroy the neurons. And that's why people with autoimmune encephalitis can have so many different types of symptoms, anywhere from seizures to personality changes, hallucinations, uh, and coma, because the neurons are what's being disrupted by these orange antibodies. And why would your own body, why would your own immune cells, called cells, which are the antibody, why would they attack your neurons? And there's two main answers. Number one is a very specific type of virus. Um, right now, researchers think Epstein-Barr virus could potentially cause autoimmune encephalitis, or um, maybe not just that. It could also be certain bacteria like Staphylococcus virus. It could also be uh, cancer cells. So here I'm drawing a purple virus for you, and it's binding to the outside of a cell. Now this cell could be a regular tissue cell. And once it binds to the receptor, it gains access to the inside of this cell. Now, a couple of things could happen. Um, something good could happen or something bad could happen. So the solid arrow is scenario one. This is the good scenario. The virus gets into your cell, but it is placed into the stomach part of the cell called the lysosome, which is full of acid and it breaks it down. Now, number two could happen where the virus actually escapes this vesicle that was brought into the cell, and now it can start to wreak havoc. And that's the X mark. By wreak havoc, I mean that it can make copies of itself. It's going to replicate and make thousands of copies inside of just one cell. If it's making copies in the cytoplasm, which is the outer circle of the cell, then it's probably an RNA virus. But if it gets into the nucleus, like I just drew, then it is a DNA virus. So RNA virus would be making copies in the cytoplasm. A virus would be making copies in the nucleus. But that doesn't necessarily have too much of a bearing on autoimmune encephalitis. What happens next is important though. The virus will eventually leave the cell. It can leave the cell through a process called budding, or it can leave the cell rather violently in something called viral lysis and more or less explode your cell along the way. And when this happens, the immune system can make a mistake. So here you can see the viral lysis, meaning that the virus is going to leave the cell and destroy it. So now that the cell has been killed, two things are going to be in the environment that an immune cell can pick up and get basically get confused. So there are pieces of your cell. I'm going to make them a similar peach color code. And then there's purple pieces of virus all mixed together. 
So I'm going to have one of the immune cells come by and then you'll see what happens next. Um, a macrophage is going to come by and the macrophages are great at eating things. So this macrophage is going to consume both a piece of the virus as well as a piece of your injured cell. Now, what happened next is that random chance is going to determine which of these is presented on the receptor here. The receptor is a protein used to communicate to other immune cells. MHC class 2 stands for major histocompatibility class 2. It's actually how um, doctors test whether or not your tissue will match somebody else's tissue for a transplant. So here you can see the macrophage consumed virus as well as a piece of your cell. Now, random chance will place one of these in the MHC class 2 particle. You want it to place the virus in there, but what if it placed a piece of your cell in there? You would accidentally activate this T cell, specifically the CD4 T cell, which could then go on to activate B cells and make antibodies against you. All right, so the other scenario is what happens during cancer. There is no genetic or familial link between uh, anybody and autoimmune encephalitis. It seems to really either be virus, bacteria, or cancer that confuse your immune system. So I'm going to show you how the cancer cell will confuse your immune system. I need to draw another one of those receptors. Hopefully you've seen a few on my videos. If not, this is going to also be a major histocompatibility complex receptor. But this one is the first one is on all of your cells. MHC class 1 is on every cell in the body except for red blood cells. Now here, it's going to talk to T cell. But what I'm drawing for you first, in the nucleus, I've drawn some red circles indicating that the DNA in this cancer cell is mutated. Now a mutated DNA can be RNA. And then that can be converted into messenger RNA by adding a cap and a tail. I'm drawing them as little squigglies here. Now these mutated mRNA can be turned into protein by ribosomes. Uh, ribosomes are free floating in your cytoplasm and they turn mRNA into proteins. So here I'm gonna draw for you the proteins as they are in most textbooks as little circles. So these chains of proteins can be placed on this MHC class 1 receptor similarly to the viral proteins getting placed on the outside immune cell called the macrophage. So here uh, you can tell that the MHC class 1 is going to get loaded is the technical term, um, which means you can see the orange receptor here is going to have a little red circle in the middle. So now this cancer cell is displaying a cancer protein and that will activate the immune system. But the trouble here is that along with this red cancer protein, this cell has normal parts of you. So this cell is displaying a cancer protein. However, when the T cell comes along and destroys this cancer cell, a mix of cancer proteins and normal healthy cell proteins are going to be released into the environment. So that's the same theme between number one and number two, is that you're going to have a mix of pieces of healthy cell and dangerous things. So here is our CD8 T cell, comes along, detects the cancer, and it's going to kill this cancer cell, releasing the same problem as before, a mix of dangerous particles, virus or cancer, mixed with healthy self proteins. And then in a small percentage of people, the immune system makes a mistake and will recognize parts of yourself as if they were a pathogen. Okay, I wanna recap this really quick because this is the most important point about why autoimmune encephalitis happens. So in an innate immune cell like a macrophage, ate something dangerous as well as parts of your cell, but then it displayed a part of your cell on the outside and activated a CD4 T cell. Now the CD4 T cell has been activated against self and it's going to go and find a B cell, the antibody producing cells in your body and activate this B cell to whatever self protein the macrophage showed it. 
And now the B cell is going to start making antibodies. And an autoimmune encephalitis is typically for some part of your neuron. It could be for um, parts of the neuron that happen at the synapse. So I drew for you earlier the two neurons, the presynaptic and the postsynaptic. And I'm going to show you like a zoomed in version of the synapse so that you can see exactly where the orange antibodies are going and how they are wrecking the brain. Now it's actually thought that this is this is terrible luck basically. It's random chance as to which immune cells will be activated and which proteins are going to be displayed on the outside. So it's, it's just really awful. It's random chance that a small percentage of people will attack their own neurons. Okay, so we're returning to the first drawing of the two neurons. This is happening in a person's brain who has autoimmune encephalitis. Remember I drew those orange antibodies and hopefully now you know what's happening. So we are going to zoom in on the presynaptic neuron in gray and the postsynaptic neuron in blue. And I'm drawing a bubble with a couple circles in it called a vesicle. And the vesicle has green neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are the proteins that allow you to communicate between neurons. Now, there's, it's not even necessarily a joke in the department, but people basically say that there's only two things in life you really enjoy, dopamine and serotonin. So here you can see a neurotransmitter jumping from one neuron to the other, and it's binding to this blue receptor. The blue receptor would then either excite or inhibit the neuron and they work in groups together called circuits and it's very important that they all fire together they need to fire at the same time so if they're ever out of sync really bad all right so as i mentioned for transmitters are proteins like dopamine serotonin glutamate gaba um, they can be excitatory meaning that the neurons will fire an electrical signal together or it's inhibitory, meaning that the neuron is less likely to fire an electrical signal. Now, what this means for someone who has autoimmune encephalitis is that if an antibody, like those orange antibodies I drew, come along and bind to the blue receptors, they're going to block neurotransmitters from jumping from one neuron to the other. So the neurotransmitter, even though it's released into this synapse, that's the space between the two neurons, it's not going to allow the presynaptic neuron to talk to the postsynaptic neuron. Their communication's getting cut off. And here you can see I'm drawing a few more in green. The neurotransmitter is just going to float away. It's not going to activate the other neuron. It's like a horror movie in the 90s when you could like snip somebody's uh, phone line and then it doesn't work anymore. But yeah, you can see here that um, now these, these receptors aren't working and that means you could be having seizures, you could be having hallucinations, muscle, involuntary muscle movement, things like that. All right, so here's the wrap up. You know now why autoimmune encephalitis can happen. It might be due to viruses, bacteria, or cancer confusing the immune system. So the first thing that can happen in the brain is that number one, there's less neuron communication because the antibodies are blocking the space at the synapse where neurons communicate. If you had situation A, you would have less excitation. That means poor memory, poor movement, potentially hallucination, and this is called anti-NMDAR, um, the specific type of autoimmune encephalitis. I'm gonna move this up a little bit and show you situation B. You could have less inhibition. Now this situation, a person would be experiencing because there would be too much activation neurons. So there really is a wide variety of experiences and problems and uniqueness to autoimmune encephalitis. And it all depends on what type of antibody was created during the cancer or the viral infection. All right, so as if that wasn't enough to worry about, I'm afraid that the immune system goes ahead and overreacts even more. So macrophages or microglia, these are both innate immune cells. Macrophages live in your body, microglia live in your brain. 
but um, either of them can sometimes traffic and respond to a lot of inflammation. So they're actually going to come along and they're going to find the antibodies and they're going to start eating the neuron synapses. So not only are they blocked, they're starting to be broken down by the immune system. So I'm going to draw these in pink. I usually draw macrophages, microphage in pink. So they are inserting themselves in between the neurons. They are consuming parts of the neurons. And then over time, they will actually destroy the neurons which is why it's so important to get autoimmune encephalitis diagnosed and treated as quickly as possible because there are real cognitive changes happening between their neurons because the B cells are making all of those antibodies um, and then the antibodies are activating the immune cells even further. So macrophages and microglia are going to just make sure that the neurons are targeted are removed as if it was a pathogen. So bottom line, the immune cells are very confused. Okay, I hope that deep dive into autoimmune encephalitis has been helpful and given you understanding of why the disease happens and what is happening to your neurons during the disease. There are some treatment options and I wanna talk about that right now. One is if you are the type of person who has had a cancer or currently has a cancer which is causing the autoimmune encephalitis, the good news is once the tumor is removed, most people who are experiencing AE from this uh, tumor, they, they get better. They do. They get better pretty quickly. If you don't fall into the category of somebody who has AE due to a tumor, then your treatment option is going to be to suppress the immune system and you can do that a number of ways. The first one is to use corticosteroids chronically to continually suppress your immune system. The other is to actually go in and go to like a plasma filtration center and they will remove the antibodies from your blood but you'll have to do this fairly often and probably for the rest of your life. The other treatment is similar to the plasma filtration, you could receive an IV that is full of antibodies. And I know you're probably thinking, antibodies got the person into this mess, how are antibodies going to get them out of it? And it's sort of like tackling, there's a larger antibody that tackles these antibodies and stops them from ever getting through the blood-brain barrier and ever getting to your neurons. So it's an antibody binding to the orange antibodies and stopping them before they can get to your brain cells. Um, so removing tumor, immune suppression. I do want to bring up a treatment. It's a little bit out there and I am not a medical doctor. You need to talk to your team, you need to talk to your specialists. I'm not recommending a treatment. I'm just letting you know what I read recently about Selma Blair. Selma Blair has been battling multiple sclerosis pretty publicly and recently announced that she is in remission. Now she she credits her remission to this aggressive treatment that she tried. It's chemotherapy. I know you're thinking you don't have cancer, especially if the tumor was removed, but the chemotherapy destroys those B cells. And ideally it'll destroy the B cells that are making those orange antibodies that are attacking your neurons. So if the chemotherapy is successful at killing those B cells, then your body could return to normal. Uh, on top of that, Selma Blair received a stem cell uh, treatment now, this doesn't necessarily have to involve fetal cells at all. You can get stem cells from willing adult volunteers through a bone marrow, through a bone marrow donation. My brother's actually done that before. Uh, but yes, so there are treatment options. There are anything from, you know, getting your blood filtered all the way up to chemotherapy and stem cells. And yeah, I just wish you all well. I've got my next video in the works. Many people requested a video on Valneva. I'll try to get that out um, in a couple of days. And please forgive me for the spot on the lens. I'm, I'm just going to have to swap it out. I don't know how it happened. But yeah, until then, take care. Stay healthy.